This is Video Lancer. Today, I will show you how to make such an epic power warp transition in After Effects. After making the transition once, you can save it as a template. Thus, you just need to replace the footage in the media holder, and the transition will automatically adjust to the new footage. By the way, regarding transitions, check out my website motionbro.com. Here you can download these Power Warp transitions and also get my other free and premium products for After Effects and Premiere Pro. Using your handy Motion Pro plugin, transitions are applied in a few clicks. Just select the two footages you want to connect and click Apply. In addition, you can add one of over 50 sound styles for each transition. Activate the Motion Pro sound effects pack and make your video even more epic. Try our free and premium video presets right now. Motion Bro, creative assets for video designers and editors. Well, let's start the tutorial. To start, we will use static images, and later I will show you how to make the transition for video footage. So create a new composition. Name it Transition. Drag the images so that we will connect through the transition. Send the second image to the pre-compose with the option Move all attributes into the new composition. Name it Media Holder. Next, we'll create a depth map using Photoshop's neural filters. To do this, from the Media Holder composition, make a new composition. Rename it to Depth Map. Go to the Depth Composition, and here, save the first frame as a file. Ensure Render Settings is the best quality and click the Render button. Open the resulting image in Photoshop and open the Neural Filters panel. Switch on the Depth Blur filter. In the Filter settings, enable the Output Depth Map only and click OK. Delete the unwanted background layer and save the file. Drag the final file to the composition of the same name. Drag the Depth Map into the Transition Composition and switch it off. Move the Media Holder and Depth Map compositions a little forward to the frame from which the transition will begin. Next, we will create the first transition animation layer. On the Media Holder layer, add a gradient wipe effect. Select the Depth Map layer as the gradient. Check the Invert Gradient and then animate the Transition Completion property. The last keyframe can be smoothed. Let's add one more layer of animation, the scanning line. To do this, duplicate the depth layer. Move this layer on top of the rest and switch on its display. Rename it to Scan Line. Trim off the end of the layer on the frame where the transition ends. Add an extract effect to this layer as well as Fill, and Solid Composite. Set the Fill Color to White. Set the Solid Composite to Black. The Extract Effect sets Black Softness to Maximum and White Point to Zero. Animate the Black Point and White Point values so towards the end of the transition there is a maximum value here. These keyframes can be smoothed out. Animate the black softness so that there is zero here at the end of the transition. To make the scan line softer, you can slightly increase the value for white softness in the extract effect. Add curves, tint, and glow effects to the layer. Change the white color of the tint effect to a similar blue. Set the blending mode of the glow effect to screen. And set layers blending mode to add. Change the glow properties and adjust the curves to make the glow effect more expressive. The next layer of animation that we will make is Pseudo 3D Shake. So duplicate the depth map layer and rename it Shake Map. Create a new adjustment layer. Name it Shake. Trim the layer duration by the transition duration. Add a slider control 
and displacement map effect to the shake layer. Here as the map, select the shake map layer. From this list, select Effects and Masks. Set max horizontal displacement to zero. Enter the wiggle expression here with a frequency of 20 and link the amplitude to the slider control. Do the same for the max vertical displacement property. Now, if you increase the amplitude value, the shake effect will volumetrically shift the pixels relative to this line. For the shake effect to animate along the scene's depth, we need to animate the gradient, just like we did for the scan line layer. So copy the extract and solid composite effects from the scan line layer and paste them on the shake map. Display the shake map layer. Set the solid composite to 50% gray. In the extract effect, adjust the softness properties so that the gradient is as soft and long as possible. As you can see, now the area of the shake effect is moving deeper into the scene. To smooth out those sharp edges, add a fast box blur effect to the shake map layer. Now let's make the shake amplitude decrease as it moves deeper. To do this, animate the amplitude controller to start and end with a value of zero. Next, we will add another layer. This is the warp effect. Create a new adjustment layer. Name it warp. Trim the extra parts of the layer and add the CC glass and CC vector blur effects here. Duplicate the depth map layer and rename it warp map. Copy the extract and solid composite effects from the scan line layer and paste them on the warp map. Additionally, add the compound blur and fast box blur effects here. Set the value in compound blur to 200. Set fast box blur to 15. Now add this layer as a map for effects on the warp layer. Adjust the CC glass effect the same way I do. Animate the softness and height properties to reduce the distortion effect towards the transition end. Now adjust the vector blur effect. Add a wiggle expression on the angle offset property to make the distorting effect more twitchy. Animate the amount property so that the vector blur effect decreases towards the end. Now let's add chromatic aberrations. Duplicate the warp layer and rename it Aberrations. Remove the vector blur effect from this layer. Add two set channel effects here and set up the same as I do. Now duplicate the CC glass between these effects and set its displacement to negative. Aberrations are ready. However, now these semi-transparent areas have appeared around the edges of the frame. To eliminate them, add a shift channels effect to the shake layer and set the alpha channel to full on. You can immediately eliminate this gap which appears due to the shake effect in the foreground. To do this, add a motion tile effect here and adjust it so that the edges are mirrored. Now we have another problem. The distortion effect that affects distant objects in the scene also affects the foreground. To fix this, duplicate the media holder layer and place it above the aberration layer. Move the animation keyframe a bit so that this layer appears with a little delay. And finally, let's add the last layer. These are fine distorting details of the warp effect. So duplicate the warp layer and place it on top. Rename it to Fine Distortions. 
the vector blur effect can be removed. Duplicate the warp map layer. Rename it to Fine Distortions Map. Switch this layer to Solo Mode. The compound blur effect also can be removed. Add a turbulent noise effect to the layer and set it up as I did. Enter a wiggle expression into the evolution property to make the animation twitchy. Duplicate the turbulent noise and place it under the blur effect. Let's set it up so that small details appear on the map. Now switch off the map layer and add it to the CC glass effect. Set the softness of the effect to 1. Set the height to 35. Animate the displacement so that the effect disappears entirely at the end of the transition. Our power warp transition is ready. But that is not all. The current transition uses a static image for the depth map. Next, I'll show you how to make a depth map for video footage. We will do it without plugins using Photoshop Actions. So replace the static images with footage. For the media holder composition, reduce the work area so it does not exceed the transition duration. Render this composition to a PNG sequence. Now let's create a Photoshop action. Open any unnecessary image in Photoshop. Open the Actions panel and create a new action. Let's call it Depth Map. Click the Record button. Now, without extra actions, create a depth map using neural filters. Merge layers. Save the file. And finish recording. Now, in the menu, go to File, Automate, Batch. In this list, select the action we just created. Here, select the folder with PNG sequence. Click OK. Import the finished sequence into After Effects. Ensure the sequence's frame rate matches your project's frame rate. And drag it into the depth map composition. Now everything is ready. Well, that's all. Subscribe to my channel so as not to miss new video tutorials and products for motion design. It was Video Lancer. Bye.